When I think about wildlife loss or climate change, I feel sad and worried. There must be a better way. It's January 2021 and we're here at the Wigan Flashes to find out how organisations from across Greater Manchester are working to establish a nature recovery network with the aspiration of moving towards the UK's first ever post-industrial national nature reserve. There's some astounding wildlife here. Whilst from where I'm stood, um, the Wigan Flashes extends for another seven miles southwards towards Pennington Flash. We've brought together some local people from across the Wigan and Lee Borough to find out what makes the Flashes so special. Both local people and volunteers have been involved here in surveying wildlife, enhancing habitats and improving awareness on the importance of urban nature reserves just like the Flashes. And this is their story. Amanda, um, so you work with Natural England, just, just tell us a little bit about yourself and, and your involvement here at the Wigan Flashes. Brilliant, thanks Josh. Um, I'm Amanda Wright, I work for Natural England and uh, my involvement is in partnership, working with all the partners, part of Great Manchester Wetlands uh, partnership and also Carbon Landscape. Uh, my involvement is very much around supporting, advising, getting stuff done. So. What excites you about the prospect of, of a nature recovery network? I think, I think it's the, what excites me about nature recovery network is very much around the opportunity to really, really boost and enhance and build upon all the legacy work that's happened in the past, but really mm. pushing forward nature, um, wildlife habitats, different species, that whole biodiversity of different species, um, not just for us, but for the next generation, for younger generations, mm. and for you know making sure it's sustainable and resilient. We yeah. we realise nature's having a hard time yeah. um, through all the different impacts, through climate change, through development pressures, mm. through just just twenty first century living, um, yeah. and so doing what we can in partnership, but also with local communities, bringing people into that journey letting them embrace the you know the, the the wildlife on their doorstep as well as the the biodiversity importance of the Wigan Flashes community engagement is is a pretty hot topic so what what are we doing differently here when it comes to community engagement well what we're doing differently here is first off we're giving people a huge range of ways to be involved they can learn skills they can be involved practically loads of activities, walking, we're working with primary schools to look at the whole educational side, but we're also working with people to actually develop the vision for this area, for this site, and also for the whole wider nature recovery network of how we can think about this bigger area. And we're doing this to first find out what matters to them. What do they care about? What works for them in this area? But also to really think, what can we do differently? And the key thing is we're working with local people from the start to really rethink how we manage this area, how we think about it. That's the key, working with people from the start. What, what benefits have there been from working in a partnership here? It really helps us to think across boundaries. The boundaries of space so we can think bigger and the boundaries of how we work together. We've brought in health, we've brought in education, we're bringing in the arts, the creative side. This gives us so many ways to work with local communities and to think how we can do things better and bigger. So uh, I'm Kieran, I'm the Biodiversity Officer within Wigan Council. Um, my role um, 
is within the corporate land management team, so we're the, uh, the major landholder um, within the long-term restoration projects of the Wigan Flashes and associated lowland wetlands. The role uh, entails working with a lot with community groups and volunteer groups, fens groups on sites such as this one. So, so Kieran, what is a fenscape? So a fenscape is, is quite a wide habitat it, that includes um, rebed, um, wet rebed, drying out rebed and the, the surrounding habitat such as wet woodland and open water. That involves ditching, um, bed lowering to make sure the rebed's wet all year round. Mm. And that's not only enhancing the rebed, but it's then enhancing the surrounding areas uh, such as the wet woodland, which then benefits um, the nationally important willow tit. So I think all around it, it's so many uh, hydrological benefits. So Mike, you've been here for some time now. So tell us a little bit more about your involvement here at the Wind Flashes. Yes, so I've been here for 22 years, having originally come for three. Uh, work with uh, Wigan Council and I'm the Lancashire Wildlife Trust project manager for the, for the uh, Wigan area. Um, started at the Wigan Flashes here. So, so you've got 1% of all the re-bed in, freshwater re-bed in Britain found within the local area. There are these wonderful meadows with the orchids. There's scrub with the willow tits and things. So this, it's just an amazing area full of exciting wildlife. <laughs> Super deeper. So, so, I mean, we're stood in, in an area of sort of mown grassland at the moment. It looks, looks pretty boring, but it's not just a bit of mown grass, is it? No, no. In the summer, this is going to be very vibrant with wildflowers. And obviously they attract lots of pollinating insects and so on. So it's going to be really buzzing. And what makes these fields really interesting is the sort of orchids that they have and things. So it has bee orchid. And it also has the Dactylorhiza marsh orchids. And these are really special in this zone from the coast through to the Greater Manchester. Because it's the only place in the world where the southern marsh orchid and the northern marsh orchids hybridise and actually meet as part of their range. So it's quite a dynamic habitat, uh, quite a dynamic process going on here. So, so you get willow tits colonising these post yeah. industrial areas. Why are they so special? Because Wigan Borough holds going on for 10% of the British population, which is an yeah. endemic subspecies, Kletchmenii. Um, and so you can't be replaced. And if you go abroad, they live up mountains. In Britain, they live in these lowland, wet, damp, swampy areas. So it's a, it's a special bird that you associate with these. And nearly every population left in the Britain, those in Yorkshire, Lancashire, and so on, are all on these post-industrial sites because the land and the habitats that they create are so special for this particular species. Innovation is more than having new ideas. The emphasis is on making new things happen. So on to a reed demonstration, biological recording and bringing communities together to have their say. So here we have an area that we've lowered the bed, redug the ditches and are getting the site much, much wetter. Um, We've removed a lot of the post-industrial spoil and this is where the reed will very, very quickly in the spring come shooting up and give us lovely fresh reed bed that's lovely and wet with lots of opportunities for the bittern to feed with uh, room for frogs and eels and fish. All being able to use this reed bed. You can hear while we've been down here the water rails. There was a bittern booming yesterday. And we heard Chetty's warbler singing, and this is only the second day of March. Steve Aitkins from the Greater Manchester Ecology Unit talks about his role. Well, the uh, Greater Manchester Ecology Unit runs the biological records database for the 10 Greater Manchester districts, and that is an incredible resource. It currently holds 2.4 million records. So Natural England has commissioned us to build what they call the evidence base that will allow us to designate, we hope, the proposed National Nature Reserve. 
I've been incredibly privileged over the last 12 years to work with so many people who share my passion for wildlife. I'm currently uh, working as the Citizen Science Project Officer and my job involves recruiting and training volunteers to carry out wildlife surveys. My advice would be to get involved in as many surveying opportunities as possible. Um, I, I started bird watching when I was a teenager and it was really the experience that I built up and the knowledge uh, through carrying out those voluntary surveys that allowed me to get my first job at the Ecology Unit back in 2008. My role in this project is we're bringing in innovative community engagement, in particular the visioning side of community engagement. How do we think about the future differently? How do we work with local people to help them rethink how they want their space to be, what mm. they can do, how they can contribute in this place? Jenny Griggs, the Community Engagement Officer, talks about the techniques for engaging local people. I'm Jenny Griggs, I'm the Community Engagement Officer for the Carbon Landscape Partnership, of which Lakeshore Wildlife Trust is the lead partner. So it's been my job to bring the partners together, of which there's been four formal partners and four supporting organisations. And we started with a public meeting, and with that we've managed to attract 256 people to the project. And we divided them into three groups, that's been local residents and friends, Group B, which is the young people from Group C, a pilot for the Shore Country Park. We've then laid on loads of training and skilled workshops. In total, we've had uh, 39 workshops, which has been really engaging. And this has helped to generate thousands of ideas for the Manchester University uh, Kept So team as well. Um, in the February half term, we had a um, half term week of nature recovery with all sorts of events from management planning to how to run your own media campaign. And in all, we've had 22,500 social media engagements. So we've heard from the specialists, but enabling local people to run with the project is its ultimate legacy. As this was filmed during lockdown, internet interviews were necessary. We've overlaid images of Wigan and Lee's wildlife just to remind us how special this landscape is. I am a local, I've lived here all my life. Um, my grandfather moved after the war and he, he bought a farm, a heath farm on Heath Lane on Wesley Heath. So I've grown up with it. Um, and the reason I've joined, you know, all these sessions and everything we do is because I believe that um, one person can make a difference, you know? So I've been involved with everything. As soon as I saw like 10 years ago that we, you know, there was some tree planting sessions, I thought, you know what? I'd like to go along and do that. Now, why did I do it? Well, <laughs> because I've been here for a while, I'd seen the landscape change over time. We have a total loss of all the landscape on a scale that's like incomprehensible for many people. You know, the coal board came along, they actually purchased all the farms there, CPO'd them, all the farmland was removed. And what they proceeded to do then was remove all the trees, remove all the grass and replace it with metre upon metre of colliery waste. It was a barren moonscape for years. Oh, everything was gone. It'd be an outcry in this day and age now, wouldn't it? Something akin to maybe, you know, deforestation at that level. It's always good to be trying to help out and in the fresh air. And it's nice to just do things as a family. A good bit of exercise as well. So we sort of just went along. Um, but I think as the more we did it, the more we got quite into it ourselves. Plus, you know, we just feel like we're helping our local community, really, don't we? And it's about giving something back, but what we really would like is, is for this to be a spark for other people, you know, to get their imagination going, be an inspiration, you know, somebody has made a difference. Well, you see them on site and they'll ask you, well, what are you doing? Oh, I'm planting trees, I'm a local, give you the story I've just given you. Oh, can I come and do it? Of course you can. The, the, the upside, I think, from, from this COVID situation, I, I've, I've had to work remote for over 12 months now. So what well, that would have meant, like many people in the country, I have a, quite a long commute there and back to work. But, you know, Zoom and everything that we've embraced now has allowed me to attend these sessions, you know, at six o'clock. I couldn't have done a session at six o'clock in the past. And I've had to have taken half a day off to get home in time. But, you know, you know it's opened up. So I think we've taken things on like the AQA, woodland management. We've done wetland management. 
We've uh, signed up for more courses, citizen science, to help out the you know Greater Manchester Ecology Unit. So I've signed up to do a willow tip survey in two locations. And we've really enjoyed them, haven't we? Like I said, we've signed up for quite a lot more. So I've, all good ways of learning. I think as a family, because we've got more involved with these sessions, we haven't watched television, have we? Not well, much, no. Hardly ever. We've, we've reverted to, to joining in as many Zoom sessions as we can to learn about more interesting things, you know, face-to-face. -face. The Ornithological Society, or LOS, is a lot easier to say. Um, LOS has been around actually now for 50 years. This, this is its 50th anniversary year. Um, and it's a society of local naturalists, really. Um, although the title is ornithological, it's, it's actually much more than just a group of bird watchers. It's interested in the natural world in its entirety, really. Um, and there are people in the society who are interested in mammals and in plants and in moths and other insects, as well as birds. Um, but the history is uh, that there was a group of local naturalists over, over 50 years ago who were very involved in, I suppose, campaigning really to try to stop Pennington Flash being taken over by a local refuse dump, which, which existed at the time on the south side. Um, and they recognised the potential of Pennington Flash for a number of different bird species. In fact, the, the counts of wading birds and water birds at that time, because of the open aspect, were probably actually better than they are nowadays. Um, and they saw the potential as uh, a nature reserve, really. And we see actually that some of the so-called brownfield sites are actually now some of the most valuable sites for regenerating nature. And actually birds and insects and mammals are doing rather better on some of the brownfield sites than on the green belt, which is not always something people understand or even want to hear necessarily. The plan to create a national nature reserve, part of that is really to, um, to engage the public and to engage organizations, voluntary organizations like LOS. Um, and we feel very much behind this initiative because it chimes in with what LOS has always been involved in, um, particularly its history in helping Pennington Flash to be preserved. Um, and we would love to see what has been known, I suppose, as the Wigan Greenheart area, that, that green area of regenerating countryside in the heart of Wigan Borough. Mm -hmm. We would love to see it given more protection, given, given more of a status. Uh, I do a lot of surveying um bird surveys and i uh you know when i so for when i go for a walk around bigger sure i will have my binoculars with me and my uh camera and long lens and i will make a record of what i see and i will report that to the greater manchester manchester ecology unit so that 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 data is captured um as a snapshot of what was there on that particular occasion and there are quite a lot of uh, LOS members who are doing that on a regular basis, not necessarily just on Bickershaw, but on all sorts of areas um, all over this, uh, the Wigan borough and beyond. Um, and all this data is important in um, trying to preserve these natural areas. And, you know, if, a, if an area becomes, as we would see it, threatened by development, uh, then ecology reports are provi provided and the the Greater Manchester Ecology Unit can provide the information, which is real data and real science and not just someone's opinion. Uh, so that, that I see as very important as well. And that's an important contribution we can make as the LOS to, uh, to this National Nature Reserve project too. And so my role in this is I've been brought in to, we really want on this project to get the voices of young people and the wider community so that we can create what is needed in this urban environment, what the people want. The aim of this uh, proposed NNR project is to um, create a national nature reserve that is of use to both people and wildlife. So what has been your role 
in engaging young people? What sort of things have you been involved in? So I've been the point of contact. So I've been reaching out to lots of local youth groups, such as the Wigan Youth Cabinet and uh, the Wildlife Trust Youth Council, um, trying to bring on board the people who are interested in nature but don't quite know where to uh, take that next step to engage with nature and have their voices heard. Everyone is aware there's a climate crisis and people are stepping up. The next generation of young activists are really knowledgeable and know what needs to be done and how they can improve the biodiversity in their area. Young people talk about the power of generating new connections, volunteering, learning new skills and ultimately how to get a job in the environmental sector. Hi, I'm Will. Um, I'm 16 and I'm a member of Wigan and Lee Youth Cabinet. Volunteering with the programmes made quite a big difference to me, especially in lockdown, um, because it's not only has it not made me feel quite as isolated, but it's also made me feel like I'm working towards something and I'm achieving something during lockdown. In the sessions, I've learned quite a lot about how to identify different species of bird. And I think that's that was quite interesting for me because I am quite an avid dog walker. Um, and so I do see a lot of these uh, birds while I'm out. And so to be able to identify them was, um, was quite interesting for me. Being able to talk and discuss with people who are experts in their fields and people who have um, quite in-depth knowledge around the subject, because I'm not a geography student, so... I don't have that specific knowledge, but I was able to take something from it and learn uh, learn about specific management strategies or learn about uh, different ways that we can all um, contribute towards looking after the environment. The facilitators were welcoming um, and, and friendly and helpful. No matter what breakout room you were in, you felt, um, you felt included and you felt um, like there was a welcoming environment. I said as well about the Ketso kits. I think that was an excellent way to kind of bridge um, online activities because normally when you're sat in front of Zoom or sat in front of a computer you can feel quite isolated and quite detached from each other so I think that was a nice way to kind of tie it all together. I'm a deal better from Wigan Youth Cabinet, I'm also 17. Um, one th the difference volunteering has made for me is um, I think it's really easy to not know what's happening in your community and I think it's really easy to just be isolated and think about yourself Volunteering is a really great way of being selfless and figuring out what's happening around you and being part of the change that's happening around you. So that's one of the uh, difference that <laughs> volunteering has made for me. I've learned through Zoom training workshops that, um, you know, the show must go on. Even um, when things, you know, seem to stop and you think that you must give up, that no, it's okay to move on. It's okay to, to find alternative ways to... Um, to carry on. <laughs> um, I'm Lorna, I'm a student placement from Bolton University. Um, volunteering for me has inspired me um, to see other people's perspectives and to explore new places um, through other people's eyes. Um, I found that very useful. And uh, just another way of connecting when we have um, restrictions and that we can bring the outdoors inside when we need to be. So uh, I'm Dylan Merke, I'm 15 years old, I'm a member of, of, of Wigan Youth Council, of the Brit British Youth Council Young Leaders Collective, of the Greater Manchester N Nature Consortium Youth Panel, and I have volunteered uh, at the Carbon Landscape Initiative. Uh, well actually I think that volunteering has made a, a very positive difference with me, because I feel that with volunteering I've learned so many new skills that I never even would have like considered my knowledge of ordinance now, like the the map of what not only what we looks like now, but what it used to look like, is immeasurably more than it ever could have been. Because you know this again, this gives the sort of education that you get from real experts in all of the fields, you know, coming together to you know, to educate you on a matter like that. So, but Wigan has some very unique fauna, uh, fauna and flora that exist uh, in. In, the, in this area and, that, and that's a result of, of Wigan's history. Hi, I'm Lucy. Uh, I'm 16 and I'm from Wigan Youth Cabinet. So um, I think volunteering's definitely made me feel a lot less isolated um, during the pandemic and I think I just like to learn about other people and their experiences um, and what they know. I've learned new ways of thinking um, through the Zoom workshops 
uh, more way to think about the environment, nature, and especially our effects on them. I'm learning uh, some new skills that I've not been able to do through the course. Both the surveying one and the NNR ones are kind of filling the gaps for me. Uh, and I'm enjoying it as well. Um, and I've also learned that there's a lot of people in the area who care about this sort of thing and you kind of don't realize it until you uh, until you join something and start talking to people um, and I've enjoyed using the padlets and things like that um, I think it's a good way for people who you wouldn't usually speak up in a classroom to speak up Hi, um, my name is Leanne and I'm from the Wigan Youth Cabinet um, and I think first of all it has been like an amazing opportunity and experience because it's like taught me most importantly about the environment that we live and like the resources with other species and like animals and definitely like I love like the ecosystem and that and I think the skills that I have um, got was observation and critical thinking because I, I felt like I was really more open-minded learning more about the local environment and definitely teamwork because I remember like when I used to learn about the environment I wasn't so interested I remember I did a project about sustainable housing and from then when I joined this group I was like I've, I just really love it it's so good and it's amazing and it's nice to see like young people raise the concerns and bring the views so that we can make a better future. I remember we had like a session about the different types of ducks. I remember I told my mum, oh, I just really want to walk to the flash and just like spot out all of them. Young people came together to chat with Tom Burdett, the CEO of the Wildlife Trust for Lancashire, Greater Manchester and North Merseyside to discuss how this could influence new ways of working. Hi, I'm Emma Greenwood. I'm part of Lancashire Wildlife Trust Youth Council. Um, in the Youth Council, we've had incredible opportunities to help with the running of the uh, Wildlife Trust and also learn about some of the campaigns that they've been doing, such as the Peat Free campaign, and do some ha hands-on projects, um, such as meeting the Dunn of Brockles. Um, we've also had the opportunity to host a youth summit in August of 2020, which brought lots of young people together during the pandemic. Um, virtually which was amazing and we got to learn about some of the relevant projects and also some of the work that they're doing in the future and learn about some things we can be doing to help conservation. Hi my name's Daniel I'm on a voluntary placement with the Carbon Landscape. Um, I've luckily been able to be involved with the uh, proposed NNR um, workshops and they've been great as I've been able to develop my skills um, helping to facilitate them um, so I've been able to support the participants and I've been able to also develop my wetland bird ID skills and exploring the sites as well such as uh, Pennington Flash. Um, I've also been able to conduct my brush cutter course which has been um, a really good help because I'll be able to use that to help manage these sites in the future and I've also um, more recently been involved in their management plans for Nature Reserves um, AQA, which will help me in the future to secure a job. Hi, I'm Tom. I'm the Chief Executive for the Wildlife Trust for Lancashire, Greater Manchester and North Merseyside. We're really happy and proud to be hosting the Carbon Landscapes Partnership. And partly that's because in order to solve the problems with nature, uh, you can only really do that in partnership. Um, one of the really obvious reasons why is because as the Wildlife Trust, we only own 0.2% of the land in Lancashire and Manchester and Merseyside. Uh, and our vision is for 30% of land and sea to be in, in nature recovery. So you can see that we can only do that by working with a really broad coalition of organisations and community groups and landowners. I think the other thing around working in partnership, which is really important, is we need diverse viewpoints if we're going to solve the problems and that's also where young people come into it as well because we, we need the youth voice we need the youth perspective we're, we're a bit you know um, uh, we, we try and and uh, solve things in the same ways all the time we need we need new voices um, brought in, um, in in order to help us um, and diversity is around ultimately making making better decisions because you've got you've got more people involved whether it's people on the youth council people involved with the with the partnership involved with the the uh, national nature reserve proposal the nature that we're, we're conserving yes it's for its own sake but it's so that future generations can enjoy it and appreciate it and 
you know, you're going to be involved in, in this, um, you know, long after I've gone. So I, I was asked to comment a little bit on what I think the barriers are for young people getting involved in, in nature conservation. And I think there are, there are two sides to it, both of which I think the, this, this partnership is addressing. I think the first thing is, is that there, there is a, a, lack of, a lack of skills. So what I see is so much passion and a heart and, in, and enthusiasm for trying to reverse um, the, this sort of extinction crisis we've got with life on Earth. Um, but often there isn't necessarily just that, that last little bit of focus and, 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 uh, and clarity about how to make that passion count, how to make a difference. So the skills that, that uh, young people are learning through, through, through this project, whether that's practical skills, um, things like brush cutting, species identification, that side of things, it is really important. Um, but for me, the other bit is actually around skills of organizing. Um, I mean, ultimately, we, we want people to be able to look after the environment wherever they live. And ideally, we need to be there as the Wildlife Trust in the background rather than running everything. We need the young people um, to be really taking ownership of their, you know, their local green space, whether, whether that's in, in Wigan, down on the flashes, or whether that's elsewhere. And often that, that isn't just around ecological skills. That's about how do you organize a volunteer work party? How do you handle health and safety? How do you handle the publicity of it to make sure that you've got a really good group of people coming? So I think those are the skills which potentially are a bit of a, a barrier and where um, we, we need to be doing more um, to, to help. I think the second side to it, though, is I think there is a little bit of a stigma. I think I think older people, I think um, decision makers, policy makers um, can sometimes be a bit sniffy about, you know, what do the young people know? Um, and, and again, I think that that's something that, that needs, needs to change and we need to tackle that barrier. So whether that is making sure that the youth council is actually uh, involved in the real, uh, the meetings where the real decisions are being made about, about conservation actions, or, or actually sometimes it, it's making sure that our meetings aren't so damn boring. I think we need to be much better at creating spaces that, that young people will want to be involved in. Um, I was also quite excited by something I saw one of the national parks do, which was a, a youth shadowing scheme, which is where the chief executive uh, actually had uh, a young person who, who went to all their meetings, all their one-to-one their, their -one discussions, literally accompanied them to parish councils and things. And that, if we could do something like that, that would be really, really powerful. So, Daniel, you, you work for the Wildlife Trust, which is... Uh, a pretty incredible organisation for what they're doing for wildlife. So what got you involved? What, how, how did you get the job? Um, well, actually, it all started about 10 years ago when the Wildlife Trust came into my college and took us out on volunteering afternoons. Never in my wildest dreams did I think, this is actually a job. You get to just go and play in the woods. So I managed to get a traineeship through the Wildlife Trust, which I learnt so much and it was such a uh, welcoming team. And I find that with everyone in the environmental sector, people are so passionate about the work and how to improve biodiversity and the habitats that we're working on. It's such a positive place to be and that makes all the difference. So, so what advice would you give to a young person who wants to enter the environment sector? So my advice would be that you can do it. Uh, I know I certainly, when I was starting out in my career, it seemed unrealistic for me to ever get a paid job in the environment sector. Uh, and I think the important thing is that you will know more than you think. Uh, so get involved in volunteering opportunities. How did you enter the environment sector? How did you work towards the job that you've got now? Well, the, my passion for the environment and nature started quite early really when um, regular holidays in the UK countryside and the passion for nature photography re really was developing um, and I was getting out uh, as much as possible and seeing things and photographing new things and learning things all the time uh, and I think it really uh, come on leaps and bounds when I was volunteering for the Lancashire Wildlife Trust in school um, just learning about the different habitats, the different species, how and why we manage the habitats uh, and just developing those skills really uh, pushed me and, and decided really that I wanted to, to have a career in the environment industry. Hi, my name's Daniel and I'm a Carbon Landscape Volunteer. 
Today I was on a brush core course funded by the proposed NNR site across Wigan and Lee. I was really nervous at first to learn how to use a brush cutter as I found it was a big responsibility and I was really worried about being able to remember all the things. However, now having just done the course, um, I found it quite easy to pick things up and um, here behind me I was brush cutting this afternoon um, and now I will be able to use the ticket and the skills I've learned today on the sites across the NNR in the future. Hi, my name's Minnie. I'm a volunteer for the Carbon Landscape Partnership and Lancashire Wildlife Trust. I'm here today at the beautiful Beacon Country Park on this lovely sunny day, um, brushing up on some brush cutter skills. Um, myself and some volunteers have been sent on a one day course um, in order to gain our brush cutter license, which is really exciting. It'll open up a load of opportunities for us um, on projects to use our new skills. Um, on yeah, on different sites, um, cutting different types of habitat, and we're we're really excited to to maybe use our skills we've learned on the NNR project, um, the NNR proposal project on on the sites there. So, um, yeah, if you're wondering what what this crazy outfit of mine is, um, it's uh, essential PPE equipment, uh, so safety equipment uh, to prevent any kind of damage to our ears or our eyes from from the, the hazards from the noise and debris. Um, that we're producing. So yeah, um, thank you Carbon Landscape Partnership. It's been a fantastic day. We've all thoroughly enjoyed ourselves and we're looking forward to putting our new skills into practice soon. Young people, including those with additional needs, have been at the forefront of improving access, supported by community organisations. Hi, I'm Sandra. I'm a Candy Coordinator for Greater Manchester and I work for Leonard Cheshire. Uh, Leonard Cheshire is a disability charity and we're all about helping uh, everybody uh, live, learn and work uh, and be independent. An access audit is a story. It, it's a document that is created by a group of people who want to know how a space works, how you, how you move through a space and how you get to a space. Um, the access audit that we did with James, uh, we looked at how to get to Pennington Flash. And it's, it's a document that we needs to include lots of different people with different needs so that it gives a really good indication of, of how we are able to access that space. Um, it's a document with, that asks lots of different questions around uh, footpaths, in this case, and around um, gates and um, signage. Um, when, when we spoke to the council with, uh, with regard to Pennington Flash, um, what sort of what sort of highlights did you did you bring to the floor? Well, at the time, there was no real way of getting to Pennington. I'd say there's about a 40, 50 yard um, segment of it that was really unstable for anybody who was in um say a wheelchair for instance or the likes of james that it was really really difficult to access uh, safely um and also and it's it quite was very uneven yeah yeah really uneven so i think being able to talk to the council uh face to face and actually show them i think james you benefited a massive amount so uh james and i had lots of discussions and james is has some real fantastic, uh, some really fantastic observations and um, comments to make about his local area, but also about the challenges that he has. And uh, he's obviously very politically minded. And uh, we had a conversation at the same time as I was having a conversation with Kate Green, who is a local MP and she's now shadow. Uh, Education Secretary. Uh, Kate was really keen for a group of local young people to go down to the House of Commons. So can you tell us about the advocacy work that you've done um, to sort of going to the Houses of Commons and speaking to members of Parliament there? Um, how did you find that? Um, <laughs> it was an experience that I enjoyed, but, um, because before then, I didn't really feel 
like um, a voice as a song. No, but no, that actually gave me confidence to speak, speak my mind and it actually helped me with other things in day to day life as well as doing that for the local community. Plenty of different different sorts of people. Yeah. And within that I've also learned how to different ways, you know, to speak to different people. Because before I didn't really I only really noticed my myself, if that makes sense. I, I didn't really take over other people's um, conditions into consideration what I know is now I do more. So it made me it opened my eyes quite a bit as well. Change is generated through fostering new relationships. This project's final stage is concentrating on just one area that's not far along in its nature recovery journey. Coal mining only stopped here in the 1990s. Over to the community connected to Bickershaw Country Park, which lies between the Wigan Flashes and Pennington. So I started volunteering with Lancashire Wildlife Trust after completing my degree. And since then I built up a range of practical conservation experience with different organisations. I had previously volunteered on Bickershaw Country Park, so when the job came available, I thought it was a perfect opportunity to start my career in conservation. And the thing I love most about this job is that every day is different, and I really enjoy the practical side. So I like coming out with the volunteers and doing the habitat management work on site. Sure, some, some species are out of place. They're odd, but we find them on Bickershaw. They've got a little niche market, you know, they've made it their home. Nature's, you know, it finds a way. It's, when you see that happening, it's fantastic. What's special about Wigan Wildlife is, is the fact that working with the Wildlife Trust and yourselves, is anybody can get involved. Absolutely anybody has the chance, opportunity to come in, see this and do something and fix the wrongs of the past, as it were, you know. I quite actually like uh, a lot of the insects, butterflies. Uh, we see some dragonflies too, don't we? And some moths, which... Uh, quite used to now but in, in days gone by before I met Alan I thought obviously moths were just a nighttime thing um, and now Alan's like pointing right to me saying well that's a moth and it's like but it's daylight. We do but, live right next to Bigger Shop. Yeah, so, so, <laughs> uh, I've got a bit obsessed with uh, feeding them in the garden having time. Well probably like me they just fell in love with it it's a nice area to spend your time. <laughs> With ducks, yes. I think we've got a link. Cows are such a wonderful, you know, they're there for a reason. We've got a real management reason for it to be there. But the amount of people that are bringing the small children, you know, uh, and kids and the adults themselves just coming along to see, to see, there's a link there. You know, you can you can get involved again, come and help out. A lot, a lot of people like the cows. <laughs> yeah. So what difference has volunteering made to us? Okay, so it's it, it's this idea of giving something back. It's having talking points such as the side, you know, to it's inspiration for other people to draw them in, to change, you know, help. I think on this site in particular, it needs a helping hand in certain locations. You know, it, nature, after all this time in some small pockets, hasn't found a way back. We've got little tiny birds that fly in from Africa, you know, probably to the things like white throat. They're about the size of a sparrow. Things that come in from, you know, Norway and Sweden, insects migrate as well. They make Bickershaw the home. You know, we found that out by volunteering. It's great. We get in touch and talk to people from different societies, like the Ornithological Society, or we've got moths groups, or fungi and stuff like that. It's just so much. You know, get away from your television. Go out and experience it. So as we near the end of our story, let's talk about the future. What is your favourite thing about the Wigan Flashes? What's the Thing that you like to see the most when you come here? Oh gosh, what I love is the variety. I think variety of the habitats, 
the species and this variety on the doorstep to millions of people. I'd just say it, like the fact that it exists in and of itself is a bit special because like there's so many places where people have no idea that they exist. Like before the first lockdown, I had no idea of 99% of all the places around my house where I could go walking. But since then, I've found a lot of new places and yeah. And hopefully in the future, um, we're going to um, there'll be a lot more connectivity between um, the landscape and um, wildlife and then also hopefully um, a more c connectivity with people, um, more people engaging in, in nature and being out there and just um, enjoying it really. And what should the future for Wigan Lee look like? I think one where um, a lot a lot greener, I hope, a lot more connected to nature. I think that's um, a hopeful thought because the more technological we, we get, the less likely we care about nature and that we care about our um, our local environment. But I hope our future will take in, consider in consideration our local environment. I think inclusivity um, and access for all and communication clearly that those places exist um because often it's by chance and some of those places are so special that it really helps with mental well-being to explore new places and to be centered somewhere so yeah we have an opportunity here to to take care of our local um environment and to ensure that it doesn't fall into disrepair again You're preserving the environment and biodiversity is a very pragmatic thing to do because there are certain things that we can do with Wigan that we never would be able to do anywhere else. I think it should look the same, uh, if not better. The way I want to see the Wigan and Leaf future is more accessible places for communities, um, sustainable buildings, more wildlife and less carbon emissions for the environment with lots of diversity, heritage, accommodations and thousands of destinations to visit. I think uh, Wigan's really, really cool. The sheer amount of green space that we've got available uh, is fantastic. And the biodiversity that we have as well is amazing. Um, from like the woodlands uh, to the fields and then of course the flashes um, and the river running through it all. And I think the future of Wigan and Lee uh, should be greener and cleaner to put it quite simply. What excites me about the Nature Recovery Network here is the uh, pr prospect of involving so many people with the nature on their doorstep. This is an extraordinary opportunity for health, for well-being, for people's sense of place, but also to see the extraordinary biodiversity here in the scars of the Industrial Revolution right here in an urban area. We want to make sure that the young people in this area know that this landscape is for their use and to create a landscape that they can be part of for the future generations. At the moment, we're in a time of biodiversity crisis and nature recovery has never been more important. The establishment of the Wigan Flashes as a national nature reserve is going to be both important for the amazing wildlife that we have here, from booming bitterns to ostentatious orchids, and also the community, which regularly visit and use this amazing site.